Hello there. I am Linda Stacy. I am the owner and founder of Living Blueprints and of the How Advantage. And business is messy, isn't it? Sometimes no matter how well we plan, things just don't go the way that we wanted them to in business and in life. And I just read Mike Tyson said, apparently, a plan is great until you get punched in the face. We all have curveballs. We all have things that get in the way of our best laid plans and intentions. And my firm, Living Blueprints, I do consulting, training, public speaking, strategy days, not just productivity skills to help us get our work done better, but it's also looking holistically about what a team or an organization is trying to create. And then building a structure that actually allows that thing to be created. The desired outcomes can actually come to fruition. It's my belief, and it's the core of what Living Blueprints is about, that everyone from individual contributor to top executive can and should and deserves to have a successful, meaningful, productive experience of work, and that that is exactly congruent with key business outcomes. It's all about growth. We're growing businesses. We can be growing individuals at the same time, and those things can all be in alignment. So back to the messiness. There's so many things that can get in the way of achieving key business outcomes, right? Sometimes the barriers are self-inflicted. We don't create any plan, and we don't have any skills to manage our time and productivity. We make too many assumptions about our colleagues or about what other teams are doing or about what the customer expects and all of, all of these things. Sometimes the barrier is a belief system, either within the organization or within the individuals running the organization. They can definitely hinder results. But most of everything that gets in the way can be tied back to our brain and our biology. And today I'm going to describe two phenomena that we can understand to help us kind of hack, help us do better at the day-to-day -day, um, things that are getting in our way because of our biology. One is the importance of breaks in order for us to be our most creative, productive selves. And the second one is the power of our threat response, our biological instinct to, to fight or to run. So we'll talk about these things a little bit. To get started, a few weeks ago I was preparing some of these notes for an informal talk I was doing in a public speaking small group that I'm involved in. And I was doing this last minute. I had picked up a spot that became open at the last minute. And I was working hard to get all these thoughts together, things that I've been thinking about and known about for a long time. And as I was sitting at my computer with my brain books and um, my productivity books, nothing was happening. And I decided to take a break. And my break meant going down to do the dishes. So as I'm emptying the dishwasher, within about a minute of taking dishes out of the dishwasher, ideas started coming to me about how to weave together all of these things I had been reading, you know, what, what stories might make an, an interesting point and how to do this creatively. And I'm scribbling all these ideas down on the grocery list because that's the paper and the pen that was down there. And I'm sure this has happened to you too, right? You're, you remove yourself from something. Maybe you go to exercise or you go to the water cooler or you go to get coffee or even just going to lunch and you let your brain kind of relax or something. You go into diffuse mode is what's happening and all of a sudden an idea comes to you. You have a eureka moment. What's actually happening in the brain is when you're learning something for the first time or when you are working on a problem, trying to figure something out, you're working very intensely in one part of your brain. And you're in task positive mode and you've heard about neural networks and you know these brain cells are doing new things. They're creating new paths so that we can be more and more creative and it's very intense and in a very small localized area. Then when we remove ourselves to go empty the dishwasher or get coffee or whatever it is, other things happen in other parts of our brain and more shoring up so to speak, is, is happening in the brain. Other neuronal pathways are happening, are being created, and we have that aha moment. We are, we're pulling things together from other, other parts of our memory, other parts of our brain, and it's allowing us to be creative. It's allowing us to solve problems. So these breaks are very important, and if you can be intentional about breaks, it's even better. What happens in the modern workplace more often than not is that we distract ourselves from our work or, or we're distracted by an external factor. And then we're kind of down a rabbit hole and it's not, we're not really working super focused 
if we're working on a hard problem, sometimes we're distracting ourselves on purpose. But if we can work for dedicated periods of time and then remove ourselves, we're actually going to get to an answer faster. So take breaks and be intentional about them. So another thing I wanted to talk about was the threat response. And when we're not intentional about our breaks, sometimes we begin to self-sabotage and say, oh, I let myself get so distracted. Now, where was I? I'm not working productively today. And this is a self-sabotage thing that happens in our brain. And we actually can have an emotional response to that that's not good, that's not actually going to help us. So with, more on the threat response. A little bit about the history, the biology in our evolution. I, I do happen to be a biology major as an undergrad, but I have not been a professional biologist by any means. But this is what all of the science and the research is saying. At the core of our brain, we share our most primitive brain with lizards and birds. And this is the part of our brain that controls our hormones, our heartbeat, it's regulatory. Again, this is the ancient brain, it's the amygdala, and it's very, very important for our basic maintenance, the things that we do not think about that are happening with our biology. Evolutionarily, the next thing that came was the limbic system or the emotional brain, and we share this with mammals. And you can think of wild animals on the savanna fighting with each other very intensely. This is where emotion comes from. This is fear, this is anxiety, this is even sexual desire. This is what's in charge when we're in high school. And for some of us, even past high school, this is where all of the threat response comes from. When we get nervous about going on Facebook Live or get nervous about public speaking or about whatever the things are that feel threatening in your environment, this is kind of what's in charge. And then finally, the most advanced brain is the cortex. And we only, only the humans, only humans have the cortex. And this is what's responsible for symbolic reasoning. And researchers say that it's likely that we, we found that it was advantageous to understand the intentions of those, of others in our environment. And so we got very, very creative about developing this part of the brain. This is what has led to art, this is music, this is scientific discovery, this is creativity, this is what is unique about humans, it's what's wonderful about humans. Now, these three parts of the brain, they work closely together, and just to give you a simple example, thinking about myself doing public speaking. As we all know, public speaking is one of the most feared activities that anyone can engage in. I start with a conscious thought, I'm going to be judged by my peers conscious thought, which really can have, it just by itself is emotionless, maybe, but that, that sends a message to the limbic system, which gives me an emotional response, an emotional response of anxiety and fear. And that emotional part of me then sends a message to the, to the ancient part, to the amygdala, the ancient brain, the lizard brain, and I might actually get a spurt of adrenaline or of cortex of cor sorry cortisol in order to help me get through that fear or that anxiety because my body is designed to fight or to run and I don't need to fight or run I don't think when I'm in front of an audience even if it's a small group large group my life probably isn't threatened but our biology is still designed this way so anytime we are telling ourselves thoughts they can be sending a message to our emotional brain, which then, then can affect our actual biology because we're being bathed in hormones that were meant to be spritzed. It was a spritz of cortisol to get us to run. Awesome. We needed that at the time. But we're not actually doing the physical activity. We're just feeling emotional. We're having lots of squirts of cortisol, and we're being bathed in cortisol. And this is one of the biggest threats to us in our modern work life, especially as Americans in the corporate setting. So exercise is smart, but also the messages that you tell yourself are important. Take a step back, and if you feel yourself having an emotional reaction to something, it's okay, you're human, it's part of your biology, but maybe tell yourself, or try to get underneath what message you're picking up on and, and change the message. Calm yourself down. The more that you can be in control of this and just be aware of it actually in the beginning can totally change the way that you work. You can 
keep yourself from being drained. These hormones in your system have draining effect over time, and they're ultimately going to be what forces you into the sofa at the end of the day instead of being ready to do something more productive in your own private time. So those are two things just to be aware of in terms of your biology and your brain and how it affects your productivity. Take breaks. Be intentional when you work focused and then also be intentional about breaks. And they don't have to be long breaks. But also understand how your brain is working for you and against you and attempt to tell yourself whatever positive messages you can. And when you, when sometimes in corporate environments, we don't have a lot of information, we feel threatened, we don't know what another team is doing, another individual, we don't know if our jobs are being um, analyzed in a certain way. In absence of any other information, fill it in with the best possible thing. If, if, if Don't automatically assume that the worst thing is what is happening in your environment and you will leave yourself with more energy and more space to do the actual work that you're there to do. I hope this was helpful for you tonight and I will be in touch with more brain and biology and productivity tips, tricks, hacks so that we can all have a more ex successful experience of work and life. And if any of this was meaningful to you, share it. Facebook has a way of kind of uh, pushing down some of these messages and um, video sometimes, for me anyway, does not get as popular, uh, doesn't get on top of feeds as much. So by all means, share if you found this useful. And if you are a leader or a team leader or an executive, and you want to talk more about the types of training or speaking or strategy days that I bring into organizations, absolutely get in touch with me. You can contact me through any of these forums. My email address is lynda at livingblueprints.com. And there is no E in the blue of blueprints. Signing off.